From the morning reading, rising dollar pushes commodity near six-year lows. Gold, copper, corn, and crude test yearly lows. Weakness in metal and energy shares are starting to weigh on the broader market. S&P 500 retests support at its 200-day average. The commodity sell-off has been quite broad and includes industrial and precious metals, energy prices, and agriculturals. Several of those markets are testing six-year lows. The S&P tests its 200-day average. Going into this week, the S&P 500 was up against chart resistance along its summer high and in a short-term overbought condition, which was starting to weaken. This was shown first by its 14-day RSI line, starting to retreat from its overbought level at 70. That line is nearing its first potential support level at 50. At the same time, the price bars show the S&P 500 pulling back to initial support at its 200-day moving average, around the um, 2060 level. Daily MACD lines have turned slightly negative for the first time since late September, which also reflects short-term weakness. The fact that weekly MACD lines are still positive, however, is supportive to the broader market uptrend. Even if the 200-day line is broken, important support is likely around the September peak around 2020. So far, this looks like a normal pullback after October's strong gains, and seasonal trends remain positive, especially after Thanksgiving. The Eurozone economy slows as export weakens. The Eurozone economy slowed in the three months to September as exports to large developing economies weaken, a development that makes it more likely the European Central Bank will expand its stimulus programs in December. The European Union Statistics Agency said gross domestic product in the 19 countries that share the euro was 0.3% higher than in the three months to June, and 1.6% higher than in the third quarter of 2014. The quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth rate was down from 0.4% in the second quarter and translates into an annualized growth rate of 1.2%, the weakest since the third quarter of last year. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.29 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of November the 13th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into the morning report. And generally, across all four broad U.S. indices, broad U.S. market indices, we have um, uh, slightly down, but nothing terribly um, scary. On the S&P futures, you're down three and a half points or less than 0.2 of a percent. On the Russell, you're down about a third of a percent, as is the NASDAQ. And then the Dow is down about uh, less than a quarter of a percent. Crude oil is up about 0.9 percent. Euro is scratch. Bonds are up about um, 0.3 of a percent. And gold is up about half a percent. And overseas action, also very weak. Um, China down 1.4 percent. Hong Kong down over 2 percent. Japan down about half a percent. Our um, perhaps most important leading market into our open, Germany, is down about 1 percent. United Kingdom also down about 1 percent. In terms of macroeconomic reports for today, we have a few things um, coming into play for today. Core retail sales, PPI, and the preliminary University of Michigan consumer sentiment uh, are the primary reports for today. So keep that in mind. There's both before the market and after the market opens reports to be involved. In terms of current volatility conditions, we have short-term VIX has popped with yesterday's action. It's now up over 18, 18.39. Uh, notice the closing trend was up over two. Normally, a trend that high would give some 
impetus or at least expectation for the overnight to be up and the next morning to um, perhaps have a little bit of a bullish start. Um, the, so far that has not happened, but obviously we're not quite to the um, cash market yet. SKU continues to be elevated and that has been a warning sign that um, to look out um, for a couple standard deviation move to the downside with higher probabilities. Your IV percentiles have moved up um, you know, pretty significantly from the levels that they were at and yet they're still very very low in relative terms um, to um, you know the year. So uh, short term increase, long term very low. So got to keep the time frames and um, check there. 24 on the S&P, 24 on the Russell, 18 on the NASDAQ, and 26 on the Dow. We did have standard deviation moves put in by all four broad market indices yesterday, and you notice the S&P came in with a two standard deviation move. Um, so playing a little bit of catch up after volatility had really lessened. We talked about that yesterday morning. Um, that um, we are a little below normal in kind of the normal two-week range of volatility and uh, made a little catch-up there um, with yesterday's two standard deviation move. In terms of our um, broad market charts, let's take a look at the S&P first. Big, ugly, red body candle here yesterday and indeed, you know, when you get the open and you get the close right at the lows of the day and you've got a great big solid body with no wicks um, that's pretty much flat out bearish and not a lot to be made of that um, so short term here ever since we had this bearish engulfing here with its confirmation we have followed that with um, at best indecision a bearish at this point we're still saying short term you know there's some encouraging signs with all these wicks below here little bit of a relief bounce but then uh, into um, Wednesday's action which was a bearish engulfing again and a low at the low of the day the close at the low of the day um, and yet at the same time we kind of discounted this to a little bit um, because it was on low volume without the bond market participants and we said it'd be far more important with Thursday's action to see what happens when all the participants came in well in fact it gap and went, uh, what we call a gap and go, and um, this is, um, you know, very much confirmation of the short-term bearish action. But put this in context, and when you do that, and indeed we have a Fib retracement here from the revisit lows to the swing high, and in the big picture, after you've got a move this large, some 250 points, this retracement here is still even with this action uh, of multiple days including the big body of yesterday it's short term bearish but on the intermediate term this has done nothing to hurt the um, the intermediate term bullish posture and indeed you could have a retracement all the way down here into the 2000 area and many people are pointing to support of importance in the 2020 area and then of course in the 2000 area if um, if we were to break this 50% retracement then this would start to become you know far more serious uh, and ominous but at this point um, this looks like, as the morning reading indicated, you know, something of a just bull market pullback slash correction, and it has not been anything yet to, um, to, to sound more ominous than that. At the same time, we certainly are not happy with a, a candle like this, action like this, volume like this. And, uh, you know, we take that as a warning sign, and we kind of get our antenna tinkling a little bit and we watch for additional signs and we're certainly going to start watching for where does support come in and where does that support become com confirmed and we see that bounce develop uh, that for sure is in play in terms of the Russell big big weakness here as well similar pattern gap and go NASDAQ also a little different body here but um, also 
um, a, um, a gap and then it backfilled, filled the um, daily gap, but then dropped. And um, so the bears definitely were controlling that. You notice in a relative terms, the bodies on the Russell, the NASDAQ, and even the Dow, um, this is actually still less than a standard deviation move here, though it was certainly was uh, one of the larger moves. Uh, of the day, but all these others, you know, very much same kind of patterns with um, big red bodies, um, you know, dominating the conversation. In terms of VIX futures, as you would expect, um, this was a pretty significant action yesterday. This is yesterday's candle. This is futures, so this has been already open for today. That's this candle here. This right here popped up through what we call the bullish zone. We think of bullish volatility as the 12 to 18 region. And this popped up through that, you know, 17 resistance area that had been uh, in play for a couple of weeks and um, closed at over 18 and is up in the uh, more worrisome bearish kind of zone. So certainly volatility is confirming that this um, increased um, instability to the market is present and so far is giving confirmation in the early part of today. So we got to very much keep that in mind. In terms of our daily report, we're still phase three. And remember one thing to keep in mind, I was thinking about this this early this morning, is when you get these um, uh, very bearish short-term trends, you have to kind of keep the time frames in mind. And always, if you listen to somebody, whether it's myself or uh, other news sources or even into the, you know, the CNBCs of the world and stuff like that, um, you always have to keep in mind what is the time frame that they're talking about. And um, especially if you're listening to technical analysis and where somebody's actually really being specific and dialed in, uh, what time frame are they referring to? Well, most of my daily report is anchored on the intermediate trend. And uh, that's measured as um, days to weeks. And, um, and perhaps you could say one to three months is uh, probably the best definition, whereas short term it would be days, okay? As in, you know, the next several days would generally be the definition of short term. Intermediate term, you know, one to three months, long term, you know, longer than um, perhaps um, um, three months is um, probably the way you would kind of think of that in terms of analysis. So. IBD status still is in a confirmed uptrend. The accumulation distribution score for the S&P did drop half a notch to a B minus. The NASDAQ remained the same at a C plus. The GMI index also dropped to a four out of six, but the buy signal does remain intact, though that author continues to remain in cash through this entire um, recent upswing. Primary market condition remains in a neutral bear. And, um, and certainly, you know, we've had these warnings and we've talked about, you know, where we're uh, hedge level zero plus normal, but with uh, some elevated risk conditions. And we've had several of these even here in this upper level uh, mechanical signals in our portfolio posture. And we've had um, some deterioration in this with this most recent action. And we start to see, for example, this um, accumulation distribution score in the S&P start to drop. We see this GMI index start to drop. We also have seen a change in the decision point scoreboards. And, um, you know, today the decision point scoreboards uh, lit up with four new short-term price uh, momentum oscillator sell signals. Now, uh, I wouldn't think that this would be too surprising, you know, given that we've had really almost two weeks now of uh, some relative weakness, uh, but still, um, they have fired. Now, this current pullback not only caused the PMOs to top, but it has yanked the PMOs below the signal lines. So interesting, this week already has seen two new long-term buy signals, the SPX and OEX. So what does that mean for the PMO sell signals to appear at the same time that new long-term buy signals appear? 
it only means that the current market conditions are bearish for the short term but the longer term picture is bullish and it tells us that any decline is likely to be followed by higher prices in the longer term. And this very much goes at the very heart of what I was talking about. Most of um, what we look at is making judgments on the intermediate term. In fact, I don't try at all to get too dialed in to the short term uh, forecast and prognostications. There is just too much noise on that level but try to anchor on primarily the intermediate term to be able to make decisions about you know how I might handle my core portfolio or the um, use of various swing trading strategies and the like and um, that's driven by an intermediate term forecast and risk level assessment not by what do I think today is going to do so that's a very important distinction to always kind of keep in mind our intermediate term market posture does remain very bullish in its posture with an upslope sentiment and indeed um, both of the position sizing opinions still remain at a um, hundred percent actually I should correct that it's 100% for the portfolio investor position sizing opinion, but volatility did pop over an 18 with yesterday. So actually that one did come down. So there's another warning sign. Um, so that would be a position sizing opinion of 50 to 75%. So if you put on new swing positions right now, you might want to think about a little bit of a reduction in position size um, given the current short-term prognostication. Um, in terms of our intermediate term market posture, that still remains very bullish and very bullish across all four indices. Now, we've seen some weakening. These numbers were all up above 95 just a few days ago, and um, they're down into the 80s now, but they're still all above 80, and anything above an 80 retains its very bullish intermediate term market posture. Hedge warning status still remains a zero plus. Uh, normal with some elevated risk aspects and it's fair to say that the number of those elevated risk aspects have increased both in the top area and in this lower area and you see here in the volatility based metrics we have market decline and sharp increase warning that's two days in a row we've seen that we now have this VIX futures up over an 18 warning flagging and we added distribution day counts to both the S&P and the NASDAQ with the S&P going to a 5 which is a warning in itself. VIX phase is increasing. SKU is now up over 135 which uh, would have a 12% probability of a two standard deviation move in the next 30 days. Now, we actually achieved that yesterday. We did yesterday have that two standard deviation move. Now, we've gone, um, it seemed like about four weeks with an elevated skew that was telling us that within the next 30 days, we should have a two standard deviation move um, with increased probability. Now, a 10, 11, 12% isn't what might seem to be a really really high rate but that's like seven times normal so that's the the um, forecast that you need to keep in mind with that statistic well frankly that statistic proved out with yesterday's action in terms of the current week's expected move and this would be for the next um, you know say six seven days um, this has started to elevate and this also becomes a warning this number was like around 29 um, just a few days ago and you see that's about a 50% roughly a 50% increase in the expected move for the next week on the SVX. In terms of some of the lower indicators you see also and I should have put this one in red New York Stock Exchange new highs new lows uh, the new lows well over 300 which would be a warning stage there as well. Um, intermarket risk aversion indicators we still have two of the five as risk off and uh, giving us warning statements. So when you put all this together, certainly the consensus of our upper term, upper uh, level uh, portfolio posture remains this uh, intermediate term bullish posture, but there's a lot um, of significant and important warnings that are in play. 
So we, we retain that expectation that this is a bull market, bull flag, or perhaps I'm now at this point a complex bull flag um, kind of pattern. But at the same time, the expectation is that new higher highs will eventually um, come back into the market and that this is nothing more than that pullback. Not quite so shallow as perhaps we would have expected a week ago, um, but um, still in the scope of things, especially in the scope of a 250 point up move uh, on our intermediate term, that this pullback in proportional size is still nothing to be particularly scared about. But we have lots of increased warning signs coming in, and that's not to be ignored. So in terms of our special opinions, um, actually the VIX has now just gone outside the acceptable window. So um, be careful in initiating new positions if you're a novice trader. Aggressive traders may still play with this, but you've got to keep in mind that there's real potential for increased volatility and delta moves, and you've got to be ready to make those adjustments. One of the first things to keep in mind here is that with option incomes, if you're going to have to adjust, you've got to have cash on the sidelines in which to make those adjustments. So don't get too um, too deep into your portfolio without having that reserve of cash to make those adjustments and keep that in play. Um, so those are a couple things to think about with the option income strategies. In terms of covered calls, we're still overall intermediate term cautiously bullish and uh, it certainly is acceptable to initiate new positions but if you're a novice trader you know at the very least go with this one-to-one -one ratio of out of the money and the money strikes probably fewer higher beta and more lower beta positions start to become a bit more defensive also um, consider those more aggressive setups that you might want to leg in using out of the money put selling and then roll that into a cover call on assignment should that happen. Um, and then of course, especially in times like this where the risk conditions are elevating, though not elevated yet, or certainly not a risk level one or even a two yet by any means, um, but keep that position size and the scale that you're willing to own. Very, very important. Um, I was looking myself yesterday, the number of um, core puts that I have on, and um, indeed, I increased some of my cash on hand by closing out some profitable bearish um, setups that were coming in to targets and raising the cash. So if I should need to have um, you know, the ability to accept assignment of a number of these core puts, I'm prepared for that. In terms of put selling, it's still cautiously bullish, can put on new core por por portfolio positions, and certainly I'll be looking at a number of those today, but consider reduced position size. So if normally you might put on, you know, say um, four or five contracts, perhaps, you know, uh, being a uh, ten or $20,000 position if you were to be assigned you know, maybe you go with, you know, two thirds of that or half of that, or perhaps you start scaling in and, um, and especially if you've got a um, option fee or commission structure to where it's per contract, you know, you can put on one contract and then if the market continues to come down, you put on another contract and you just kind of scale into the position size. You perhaps spread that position out over time. So instead of being five contracts all on the same expiration day and the same strike, you might look to spread that out over, you know, two or three expirations and to spread those, um, contracts over a number of different strikes. So a number of ways to consider in diversifying and spreading your risk around while still being in play because we are still at this point intermediately termed bullish and while we have elevated risk factors and we start using some of these tools in our box that allow us to diversify risk and to keep that in mind, uh, it's not yet the kind of condition that would say, you know, just shut down and step aside. In terms of sector specific market posture, you see a sea of red now on the short to intermediate term, at best neutral. 
do take note of which sectors are neutral. They're the ones that are likely to bounce first. Remember which sectors were holding up the strongest before we got this most recent, uh, more pronounced weakness. They're the ones that will likely be the first to come back. And then, of course, in terms of um, the percent change, you see here, uh, while energy took the biggest hit, and we talked about that in the morning reading, um, broad-based hit to commodities, and some of these commodities are coming into six-year lows. This continues to be an area of significant weakness, and you see the one year down almost 24%, the year-to-date down 17%. And, um, and red across every single time frame that we track. So um, if you thought the bottom was in on the energy complex, if you thought the bottom was in on crude or even gold, um, that, uh, that kind of value play investing is one that um, can be very, very difficult, um, especially if you've got any kind of short-term horizon, kind of swing trading horizon, uh, because... Um, Trying to buy value means that you have to accept that you might be wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong before you're finally right. And if um, if you're doing the value play um, kind of approach, um, you've also got to align that with a very long-term horizon to be able to sit out that increasing hit or, or participate with that increasing heat as you build your position and then uh, eventually be right but eventually it could be quite some time into the future so just kind of keep that in mind um, if you're playing a sector like energy or materials which have been very very difficult sledding for bulls in uh, in each of those sectors okay so we've gone quite long today had a lot of a very important material i hope you think it's also important to your trading and indeed if you found that what we're offering here with our free uh, market preview is helpful to your trading the way that you can in quotes pay us is to acknowledge us through the social media and on youtube obviously you can subscribe to that channel and by doing that, that alerts you when content is posted. So um, uh, now, frankly, once it's posted, if you if you wait three or four minutes, um, you'll get a higher quality resolution, um, especially if you're watching in high def. Um, you know, just because it's been processed and posted doesn't mean that um, three seconds later you'll have the prettiest picture. And many of our graphs and other items uh, have have a lot of um, fine detail to them so it's usually best to wait two or three minutes let that get fully processed and loaded up um, but once you get that notice um, from the YouTube email um, for the subscribers that gives you the heads up that that content has been posted for that morning and you can jump on that um, also you can like us on YouTube you can retweet us to your Twitter followers to your stock Twitter followers etc emails can go to support at falconglobaltraders.com and uh, obviously I'll slide through this you can hit the pause button if you need more time to review this I'm not going to spend any more time on this today we've had a long video but these are some of the um, other things that are going on and uh, additional opportunities that are available you can see the websites here or the email addresses to be able to um, inquire for additional information. Disclaimers as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review this. And we'll see you back here on Monday morning for the Falcon Global Market Preview. Good trading.